Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue the analysis of the warning, finding the warning in the writings of the saints, in the prophecies of the saints. So we're going to be looking at the same website as last time about the warning, about the warning.com. And you can see on your screen a set of prophecies of the saints it says they put six prophecies on this website and I'm going to look at all six in this video because it won't take too long to look at them all. So let's look at the first one. Now this this prophecy from the saints is by a person called Elizabeth Canori Mora and it reads then a great light appeared upon the earth which was the sign of reconciliation of God with man. Okay, so on this one, first of all, oh, it's given as a reference here, it's given as a reference to Elizabeth, and it's um, a reference taken from a book called The Miracle of the Illumination of All Consciences, and actually we, we can't even look at the reference, but my view on this one was, first of all, I, I didn't even know of this person, Elizabeth Canori Mora. When we search for her, she is a blessed. She is a blessed. But what this text actually means, then a great light appeared upon the earth, which was a sign of reconciliation of God with man. Is that, is that about the warning? Is that about the warning? It certainly isn't clear, and we need to have the context of that quotation, because it's talking about a past event. Then a great light appeared upon the earth, which was a sign of reconciliation of God with man. That could be Elizabeth, Blessed Elizabeth, saying, talking about, let's say, she could be referring to an event about the time of the resurrection. Perhaps she could be referring to an event at the time of the ascension. She could be speaking about some past event. It could be a prophetic past tense, seeing something in the future and then talking about the chronology of it. So this could be about a future event. But when we think of the warning, the kernel, the kernel is illumination of conscience. The kernel is God looking into the soul of each person on the face of the earth simultaneously, waking them up from sleep, speaking to them if they're in a coma, whatever. Everyone knowing where they stand before God immediately and then having a mini judgment, a great light appearing upon the earth, the sign of reconciliation of God with man. To be honest, to be honest, in terms of the Garabandal chronology, this sounds more like the permanent sign. If this is a prophecy linked to Garabandal, this sounds like the permanent sign, which is going to be, seems like a great light. It's going to be permanent. It's going to be a sign which will exist to the end of the world. I think if this is about anything, it doesn't seem to be about the warning. It seems to be about the permanent sign, which is an aspect of the miracle. So the next one. Okay. From, I think she's blessed. Blessed Anna Maria Taiji. A great purification will come upon the world, preceded by an illumination of conscience in which everyone will see themselves as God sees them. Okay. So this one, it seems to be about the warning you know and she's using the, the alternative term for the warning the illumination of conscience a great purification will come upon the world preceded by an illumination of conscience which everyone will see themselves as god sees them that could almost be exactly what i just said you know when i was trying to describe to you very briefly what the warning is and again the link to this is from the same book, Miracle of Illumination of All Consciences. Um, let's move down to Anna Maria Taiji. Okay, so in this book we've only got those three lines, and I wanted to check this now on the um, on this website. 
because from my research about this quote from Blessed Anna Maria Taiji, is that it's it's very difficult to find the source for this one. And Jimmy Akin did a podcast on the warning some time ago on his Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, and and he concurs with me. You can really search as hard as you like, but but you can't actually find this in Blessed Anna Maria's writings. The only the only the only piece of her writings referring to the illumination of conscience are the is this sentence, and it's just kind of appeared somehow in the literature. So on this one, although it certainly sounds like the warning, this is the best one. This is the best one. But we don't have the source for it. We don't have the source for it. Maybe maybe I need to do some more research on a video showing you how we don't have uh, a secure reference for this one. Because it's certainly, of all, the, of all the quotes we're going to look at, this is the strongest. Okay, I think that's all I'll have to say on that one. Going back to the website. Okay, this one appears a lot. And actually, I think it's the weakest. I really think it's the weakest. St. Edmund Campion. And we've got a lovely quotation here from Evelyn War's book on St. Edmund Campion. A fantastic book. I reread it only earlier on in the year. It's an amazing book. It really, especially, well, not just if you're English, but it, it's a really great book about, about this great saint who so few people know about for some people the only thing about they know about saint edmund campion is his so-called prophecy of the warning which is a great pity because what a great man he was a great scholar a great uh, a great sermonist a great uh, apologist for the faith a really amazing man okay so let's read of this extract saint edmund in a sermon spoke of a great day he was queried to what that was. The Queen's Council. So what would you wish to wish more manifest? The great day is threatened, comfortable to them and terrible to us. And what day should that be wherein the Pope, the King of Spain and the Duke of Florence have appointed to invade this realm? Then St. Edmund said, O oh, Judas, Judas, no other day was in my mind, I protest, than that wherein it should please God to make a restitution of faith and religion, wherein, as in every pulpit, every Protestant doth, I pronounced a great day, not wherein any temporal potentate should minister, but wherein the terrible judge should reveal all men's consciences and try every man of every kind of religion. This is a great day of change." This is the great day which I threatened. Okay, so what are the problems with this one? Well, well, first of all, he says, they're asking him about a great day. And they're saying, are you talking about the great day? You know, the day that the Pope and the King of Spain are going to invade England. And he replies, no, of course not. I'm not talking about some invasion of England by earthly potentates but rather i'm talking about the same thing that's preached in every protestant pulpit the day that the terrible judge shall reveal all men's consciences and try every man of every kind of religion okay so the first problem is is saint edmund says i'm talking about the same thing that's preached in every protestant pulpit and the warning the warning was is not preached from every Protestant pulpit. It certainly wasn't preached in those days about, you know, uh, the warning wasn't the subject of, of preaching um, in 16th century England. I think if St. Edmund was talking about the warning in this passage, the next line of the book would have been a kind of, could it would have been a kind of shock, astonishment maybe? maybe a further question but instead this is the end of the matter he's talking about the second coming he's talking about the the final judgment okay the question in response to that is why does it say this is a great day of change this is a great day which i threatened okay i think it's because most likely the most likely reason is our understanding of change is different from 
from the language that that evening war is is using quoting something from the 16th century because in what way can you change at the second coming that's what people are wondering you i mean the second coming and the judgment that's not normally considered as a day of change it's normally considered for us in our language a day of judgment a day of definitive conclusion not of conversion So that's unusual in the quotation. But given the context, I think we've got to just take this little bit great day of change as really being just an unusual turn of phrase because the whole context is that he's talking about an event that's preached in every Protestant pulpit and the warning wasn't preached in every Protestant pulpit. It wasn't even preached in every Catholic pulpit. So St. Edmund Campion, it doesn't seem like he's talking about the warning he's talking about the final judgment okay now let's look at the quotation by saint faustina this is commonly cited to be about the warning jesus says write this before i come as a just judge i'm coming first as the king of mercy before the day of justice arrives they'll be given to people a sign in the heavens of this sort all light in the heavens will be extinguished and there will be great darkness over the whole earth then the sign of the cross will be seen in the sky and from the opening of the hands and the feet of the savior were nailed will come forth great lights which will light up the earth for a period of time this will take place shortly before the last day so it's an unusual quotation it seems to be talking about lights clearly lights in the sky coming from the cross it seems like it's saying that there's going to be a cross an illuminated cross in the sky and is our lord on the cross or is it saying that from the points on the cross where our lord was nailed there will come forth great lights it's not entirely clear what this event is describing but I don't think it's about the warning. First of all, I know it's called he's coming as a king of mercy. He's saying I'm coming as a king of mercy and there's going to be a sign in the heavens. But it doesn't talk about the illumination of conscience here. And it's saying that the lights are going to last for a period of time. Again, this sounds more like more like permanent sign business although not permanent, a period of time. But it's not going to... It doesn't seem to me like this, that the light is going to be there for 15 minutes, which is the amount of time that the warning's going to be. Okay, but the real reason that I'm not convinced about this referring to the warning is the final section. This will take place shortly before the last day. And we all know that the warning is not shortly before the last day. Warning miracle chastisement reign of the antichrist return of christ that seems to be the chronology warning then there's perhaps there's a a year before the miracle according to garabandal and then there's going to be a great a long period it seems of of gradual falling away because after the miracle people are going to be converted so radically and so maybe we're talking about a century perhaps before the chastisement maybe certainly 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 not shortly before the chastisement and then after just chastisement there's another gap and there's another gap and some people think there's another conversion then before eventually we get the reign of the antichrist and the tribulations in the book of revelation and so the idea that this refers to the warning seems to me unlikely because the warning is not shortly before the last day it's an interesting passage and what it's actually referring to it's hard to say it's hard to say but it seems to be more linked to the final judgment again the final judgment rather than the warning okay next one this is the weakest one saint bernard of clairvaux the immediate intermediate coming is a hidden one i don't know why um this one has been chosen really it's a sermon that we get in the um the new right office of readings a beautiful sermon 
We know that there are three comings of the Lord. The third lies between the other two. It is invisible. While the other two are visible, in the first coming he was seen on earth, dwelling among men, he himself testifies that they saw and hated him. In the final coming of all flesh, all flesh will see the salvation of our God, and they will look on him whom they've pierced. The intermediate coming is a hidden one. It is only the elect, is the only elect see the Lord within their own selves, and they are saved. In his first coming, our Lord came in our flesh and in weakness. In the median coming, he is, comes in spirit and in power. In the final coming, you'll be seen in glory and majesty. Okay, first problem. In it only the elect see the Lord within themselves. But the warning is something that everyone sees the Lord in themselves, or the Lord, rather, looks into them. Now, the traditional understanding of St. Bernard's third coming of our Lord is that it's referring to grace it's referring to sanctifying grace through which our Lord is invisibly present interiorly in the soul of the believer and there's no reason to believe that this is referring to a moment of judgment there's no mention here about judgment he's saying that the final the third coming is about judgment the first coming was when our Lord was visibly present on earth and the third coming is our Lord's presence, a hidden presence in the soul of the believer, in the soul of those in sanctifying grace, whereby our Lord is present to them. That's that's what this is about. And I know that the author has added uh, an explanation to try and give us a reason for why this is about the warning. But really, it's not about the warning. The middle coming is the presence of our Lord through the power of sanctifying grace in the soul of the believer. Okay, and again, Saint Cyril of Jerusalem. There is a birth from God before all ages, a birth from the Virgin at the fullness of time. There is a hidden coming, like that of rain on fleece, and the coming before all eyes still in the future. Okay, so that he's talking, he's saying here that the hidden coming was the first coming the first coming was the hidden coming the first coming was marked by patience the second is about the crown of a divine kingdom and then he's contrasting the first with the second there's no three comings in saint Cyril of jerusalem there's just two and the first one was a hidden one because our lord came in a hidden manner not every eye saw him when he was on earth, and certainly, certainly in Bethlehem when he was born, it was a it was a fact known only to a few. So this isn't referring to the warning. Having looked at the saints, the supposed saints' writings on the warning, in conclusion, the most likely is Anna Maria Taiji, blessed Anna Maria Taiji. But that's the one which has got the, the least um, source credibility to it. For the, as for the worst one, it's hard to say. Almost all of the others are pretty, pretty poor references for the warning. And so that concludes our analysis of prophecies of the saints about the warning. What surprised me most is how few prophecies from the saints there are about the warning. And the few that we have that are presented on this website aren't great. They aren't, they aren't killer quotations of, of certain prophecies about the warning. Obviously, accepting Anna Maria Taiji there. In the next video, to conclude this study, I'm going to look at minor apparitions or other apparitions that spoke about the warning prior to Garabandau, because there's something to be said for the apparitions at Heed in Germany. So I'm going to look at those in a future video on this subject. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.